he he had all the moves down, and uh, you know you can see how much he helped Ozzy get big again. Now here's a question for you: Did you ever read uh, Rudy Sarzo's book he put out? I did. Now again, this goes back to what I was saying about you. The documentation, Rudy's book, it was like he I must have kept a diary or something because he had dates. And he knew every little thing that they did, like from the time he met up with Quiet Riot up through until the time he went to Ozzy and Day by Day Diary. It was just amazing. I, 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 Rudy's a pretty meticulous guy, so I, but I had no idea that he kept records like that. But that's a pretty interesting thing. To, to, you know, It's almost like he would have a premonition that I'm going to need to know these dates someday. Yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty scary. I, I mean, um, how about... Uh, now, Peter Margolis helped out with this. Was this, like, did you guys work together from day one? Because I know he was trying to put together a documentary, and then it fell apart or something. That documentary uh, was by a company called Dakota Films. And uh, I guess just, I don't know exactly all the details, but, you know, they had a lot of problems. Right. And certain rights that they could or couldn't get, and it just ended up... Uh, kind of falling by the wayside. And gotcha. as far as I know, it's, it's, I mean, I, I'm not going to say it's dead, but to right. me, I guess it's kind of in limbo. Gotcha. Now, you, like you said, you had um, yourself in the movie, your brother, um, Randy's girlfriend, Jody, his fiance, which something I never knew, that she was with Kevin originally before she was with Randy. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it she was talking with bit. one girlfriend, and there's a little piece in the movie about where well, I used to, I went to USC film school, and I used them both in one of my 10-minute uh, movies for film school, and one day they got in a fight, and I said, okay, I need another girl to do this, and Jody said, no way, I'm doing it. So he was a trooper, and, and we didn't want any other girl to be in the movie. Um, but you know, Kevin had a roving eye, and what can I say? He, uh, they stayed friends, and Jody and Randy started hitting it off, and Jody became Randy's fiance. Now, the one thing that really came across in this whole movie is you guys were—I mean, it was like a family. I, I mean, what you guys had built up—it was, you know. People think they they look at the band. They think, all right, it's the band. It's you know Kevin, Randy, Drew, and Kelly, and then it was Rudy. I mean, there was this whole background family. It was you and Jody and um, Lori and uh, Randy's guitar tech that you, uh, his uh, road. Yeah, had a complete support system where I took pictures and did lights, and I even got to co-write a few songs. Not music, just lyrics. Uh, and actually, the original Quiet Riot logo um, is my design. Okay. And then Jody would do makeup and hair, and she sewed the clothes and and helped design them. And another girl, Lori McAdam, who was Jody's friend, you know, was also designing the clothes. And um, Brian was doing guitar stuff. And I, there's a guy in the movie I forgot to mention. Kim McNair was one of Randy's best friends. Yes. He would help me, and he would he would do the spotlight. So, you know, it was like everybody was there. It was all for one and one for all. And we'd have, you know, we'd party together and do stuff together. I've got a picture in the book of Randy at my birthday. In fact, there's another thing that happened, which really made me feel that these guys were my friends. Like, it was, it was March of 75 when I met Randy. And in December of 75, I got pneumonia. And I was in the hospital for a week, and Kevin and Randy came and visited me, you know, and, and they didn't have to do that. When you're, you know, who wants to go to a hospital to see somebody? Sure. So they came and visited me. I felt really good about that. That's awesome. Now, how yeah. about, um, the, there was the whole, um, towards the end of Choir Rice, which was probably, I guess, the last year, and then Rudy came in, the whole uh, fallout with Kelly. Were you going to, did you have any intentions at any point to ask Kelly to be part of this movie? If people don't know, uh, the Kelly I'm referring to is Kelly Garney, the original bass player of Quiet Riot, who was replaced by Rudy Sarzo, who was also the Metal Health era of Rudy Sarzo bass player. Was there any intention ever interviewed Kelly with this whole uh, project? Well, 
Kelly lives in Las Vegas, and, you know, I didn't feel that for this I needed to get anything that he necessarily would say. I, I have a, There's an interview that Kevin did with him on the radio in Las Vegas. Right. That we used. Um, it just didn't happen to work out. So, you know, we spoke a little bit, but it never happened. Yeah, he he had put out a book a few years ago. I guess it might have been about ten years ago about Randy Kelly. And, yeah. No, Kelly, Kelly has a book. It, it's out now. No, there was another book. I'm almost positive because I have it somewhere. Really? That and I, I, I'll find I've never it. I'll heard let that. you know. It's a it's a black and white polka dot book. And that's I, by another guy, I believe. I think that's from someone else. That, uh, okay. I don't. That's not Kelly. That's somebody else. Okay. Okay, my but I don't know the guy's name, although I've seen it on the internet. Yeah, and I just remember reading. I just felt like, eh, like this is all just rehash of the same stuff. Not like you know, seeing this documentary just brought everything together. Um, ha- now, how did everybody feel like when Rudy came into the picture? I, I mean, the bass playing of Rudy between Kelly. I mean, it's night and day, in my opinion. And I told, uh, I met the mental health version of Choir Ride. I guess it was in 03 or 04. They played a small club in Philly, so I got a chance to meet them. And I told them, I, I think the best rhythm section in hard rock music of all time, and I've told Frankie been this on Facebook, I'm friends with him, is Frankie and Rudy. I mean, they, I think uh-huh. they're just the best. You know, they, they everybody saw what happened with that Metal Health album that just exploded, and they were a big part of it, and they played great on it, and they played great live. I also... Like I, I don't know if I said this clearly, but I toured with Mental Health with the Mental Health tour. I was doing the lights, okay. so I saw them every night, and it was just so much fun. You, you, you lived a hell of a life. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I just kind of fell into all this stuff because um, I went to USC film school and I wanted to be a movie director, but you know that's really political. Going to school at USC, you got to really work your way around all the people and all the teachers. And I just, at the time, wasn't mature enough to realize the politics I'd have to deal with. So uh, I kind of just started working with Quiet Riot, and I got to do something that, you know, lots of people want to do but don't get a chance to do. So I hope when people, like, watch the movie, they kind of get a feeling of that time of the early, middle, late 70s when, Bands were trying to get signed, and it, it, it could be a story about any band really trying to make it that were friends and 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 had their special relationships. You know, yeah. I, there's people that have watched the movie that don't know anything about Quiet Riot, and they come away like you said with some tears or some you know misty eyes at the end of the movie when when it when it ends. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, another thing that I didn't never knew is how they recorded, tried to record a disco song. You know, the, the point where they were saying they were trying all different styles, like the record company would tell them to record this. And I like Rudy, the way he explained it was, you know, do something like uh, Rod Stewart, do you think I'm sexy? And by the time yeah. they would write it and record it, it's off the charts, and they'll say, well, you know, now try something like this. But you actually played like a quick clip of that song. I never heard or knew that existed. And I was like, this is just horrible. I couldn't imagine Randy <laughs> trying to play that. <laughs> You know what? They pulled it off live because Randy had such a great guitar tone. It it worked live. I mean, yeah, it was a disco song, but with him hitting those power chords and his leads, it it was good. I mean, you're not going to hear it in a in a disco people dancing, but right. they they were try anything to get signed. It just it you just didn't work. I mean, they had crummy producers on those two records and. You know, it's just a shame. Nobody, the, the producers really didn't recognize Randy's talent. Yeah, I, I mean, them, like they didn't take the band seriously. If anybody's heard those first two albums, like if you hear the first one, it, it's 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 bad. I mean, the 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 production of it is just so bad. And then yeah. you go to the second album, and you can tell like they've grown as a band, they've gotten older, they're matured, and the sound is better, and it's almost there. And then it was just it was too late. But then when you hear Randy, you know. Two years later, that Blizzard of Oz album, you're like, wow, what happened here? It was like, it's just amazing how you hear him growing up through those years. I'm sure the experience of recording those two albums helped them immensely to do the first Ozzy album. 
like Randy was double and triple tracking, like on a song Killer Girls on the second Japanese album. Mm-hmm. And he was triple tracking this stuff, and, and he did the same thing on the Ozzy record. So he gained so much experience, you know, being in that band. It, it, anyway, <laughs> just want people to know, can I give it a plug now? <laughs> plug away, plug away. <laughs> Well, you can buy it at redmatchproductions.com, or if you want to friend me on Facebook, I'm out there, Ron Sobel, or Red Match Productions is also on Facebook. And, uh, you know, write me. We can talk Eagles football, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't Did you see enough. that Silver Linings Playbook movie? You know what? I took my wife to see it last Friday night, and uh-huh. as I described it, and, and I was telling somebody today at work, it's the perfect chick flick for a guy to take his girl to. <laughs> an Eagles fan. Because it's all uh, about the Eagles, and it's all about 